Hello and welcome to Space Shuttle, a journey into space. And this was released by Activision uh, originally for the Atari 2600s uh, back in 1983 and the C64 version came out in 84. And I think it's a pretty ambitious game really uh, for the Atari 2600s. Um, and the C64 version, it's a fairly direct conversion, uh, didn't really add much, uh, and I think they could have added uh, a bit more to it, uh, uh, perhaps more missions or, or better graphics, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I still think it's pretty good, and uh, well, let's get started. So, at the get-go you can select uh, between three different flight modes. Uh, flight 1 is the auto simulator, which gives you it's mostly a demo, but it gives you some some slight control over events. Um, number two is the simulator, which uh, is the whole game, but uh, the the warnings aren't rigidly enforced. And f number three is the actual proper mission, um, which also has uh, limited fuel, and the only way to get a, a, a rating at the end of the game is to play um, number three, and uh, depending on how many times you've docked with the space station and um, or the satellite, uh, and how many uh, how much fuel you have remaining, that indicates uh, what ranking you achieve at the end. But uh, we'll, we'll stick to number two because uh, I'm a bit rusty. And uh, if I get the odd warning, then it's not such a drama. So the idea is that you take off, and then you've got to dock with the satellite, uh, and then um, prepare for re-entry, and then uh, re-enter the atmosphere, and, and then land at Edwards Air Force Base. Um, so we'll select number two. I press L to start the launch. And uh, we'll turn the main engines on, and at minus four. And what you do is, you hold down fire, so, uh, you can see the status panel, uh, the, the little flashing arrow. Uh, that's that's the thrust, and all you do is hold down fire to uh, match with the computer uh, suggested thrust, or the calculated thrust. And all you do is just keep pressing fire to every time it moves, just hold it down until it lines up. And you just keep an eye on the altitude. Um, underneath the altitude indicator is a couple of gauges. Uh, you move left or right to, to keep the that little circle that's in that s rectangular box. You've got to keep that in the middle and all you do is push it up and down to Make sure your trajectory follows the, the curve. And we're just uh, on course here. And the idea is that uh, once you get above 200 nautical miles, uh, you disengage the main engines. But um, the idea is to get as close to 210 as possible because that's, because that's the altitude that the uh, satellite is at. I was getting a warning there because uh, my flight path is off a little bit. So it's fairly simple, but uh, it's engrossing enough. It's enough to keep you busy. I mean, it's not an over-the-top simulator. It's, uh, it's definitely a, like some of the best simulators of the of the day. It's uh, a bit of a hybrid between, uh, you know, creating something approaching a Turn the engines off. It's it's a bit of a, a, a compromise between creating something that feels realistic and something that's is um, still fun and playable. So here we are. Um, we've managed to achieve the correct altitude. What we need to do now is stabilize the orbit. Uh, I'm just uh, turning the page in the manual here. This is one of these games, obviously, that you do need manu the, the manual for, or some instructions. So what you should do is uh, now open the cargo bay doors, just to help cool down. 
uh, the shuttle. Press R to activate the OMS rotational engine. Move joystick forward or back to set pitch to minus 28. So, this points the shuttle down a bit. You can see the Earth appearing on the screen. So we're at minus 28. Now that we've done that, uh, it's time to try and line up with the satellite. And at the bottom, you can see there's a S curve. Uh, that's a ground track screen. And the solid white dot is us, I think, and the flashing one is the satellite. And it's just a matter of matching, of uh, adjusting your axis uh, and speeds uh, to help. Uh, dock with the satellite. Right, so press T to activate RCS, so let's change to a different engine type. Then all we're doing is uh, just adjusting the various axis, so fire and up and down changes your altitude, you want to be at 210. And move left and right to adjust the axis. Look, there's a satellite uh, pretty close actually. And just increase our speed a little bit. When we've locked out here, sometimes it is, you've got to slow down quite a bit or speed up and then wait quite a while to catch up with the satellite, uh, but this time we've, we've managed to lock out, I think. Oh, no. I managed to screw that up. So we'll slow down a bit, let, the, let it catch up again. There we go, we have rendezvoused with the satellite and uh, as I said earlier, if you're in the proper um, mission mode then you get more points uh, the more times that you rendezvous with the satellite but it becomes more difficult to do so after every time but uh, because we've, uh, we're have we we're just playing the simulator modes, uh, we'll just uh, do the one dock. So now it's time to do the deorbit burn maneuver. So what does it say here? Adjust Z axis until altitude reaches 210, which it has. Pull joystick back and forwards to set speed to Mach 23.9. Yep. Press R to activate OMS. Turn shuttle round completely. Move joystick left and right to set your at 180. So uh, let's talk about the game a bit. Uh, I mean, it's I think it's quite an absorbing game, but. Um, at the end of the day, you're mostly following instructions. There isn't much scope to deviate uh, from it and do your own thing. Uh, and there's only the one mission, really, which is to dock with the satellite. Um, I think if there'd been more missions, uh, the game would have had, so, uh, you know, more of a lasting appeal. But um, as it is, I think what's here is really well done. And uh, set pitch to minus four. I think it's really well done. It's just. Uh, once you've done the mission a few times, uh, okay, there's a bit of a challenge that you know um, to try and get a better score. Uh, press fire to. So what we've done is we've turned the shuttle around and changed the angle of it, and we're going to burn the uh, engines here to slow down. Slow down to Mach 19. I mean, graphically, it's pretty simple, uh, as you can see. But uh, I mean, it, uh, th there's enough here just to, you know, you know, fire your imagination up. I think. Um, turn the shuttle back. back. So turn the shuttle back again. There's, there's just enough to, to fire up your imagination. I think. You know, and if I had, had this, or uh, if I had, uh, had an Atari 2600 back in the day and I had this, uh, I think I would have been pretty much blown away. 
Um, I believe it came with a sort of little overlay um, to stick on the console because it, it used so all of the buttons. Um, oops, let's just pause it here so I can read on the manual. Um, so, I've, so we're just about to re-enter. So I think what I need to do is change the pitch and close the cargo bay doors. So that's F5 to close the cargo bay doors. Oops, I don't don't have had time to change the pitch. Never mind there. Eh? Looks like we're descending anyway. I probably would have got a fatal error if I'd been playing in the, the, the proper mission mode. So all we're doing is, uh, if you look at the uh, trajectory curve again, we're just moving up and down to keep the Uh, just keep it on that curve there and left and right just to keep it aligned properly. And we're really just slowly descending into the atmosphere. Yep, so graphically it's pretty simple, but it's 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 more than functional. I mean it's it's decent enough um for what it has to do. Um and everything's really well laid out. I think uh, the sound is pretty simple, it's mostly white noise and the odd sort of buzz. But again, it's uh, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, because we're into the atmosphere here, we're, we lose radio contact um, with the mission control. So you can see the controls are stopped update, updating. Uh, they've sort of blanked out and are intermittent uh, as we enter the atmosphere. And just trying to... Yep, there we go. Just good. Signal's coming through now. So yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've never played that, it's, it's definitely worth a, a play or two. It's just, uh, you just go on the internet and try and find the instruction manual for it. Uh, I'm lucky enough that I owned this back in the day, so I've st I still have the, the manual. I have it in front of me here. You know, it's a 30-page manual, and it's quite an interesting read. Uh, I think like a lot of simulation games back in the day, uh, you know, uh, the manual was a big part of that. Uh, big part of the experience. Uh, and th this manual is nicely written. It's fairly simple, but uh, it does talk a bit about the procedures and a bit, about, a bit of background about the, the space shuttle. So here we are approaching Edwards Air Force Base. Just got to keep lined up again. Just keep the nose. Got to just if you look at the graphs at the bottom, it's just keeping everything lined up. It's a bit twitchy at this point. There's a bit of turbulence, uh, and apparently the the real space shuttle did, did handle like a, a brick. Um, you know, design it was designed as a rocket. Really, uh, it wasn't even what looked like a, a plane. It didn't didn't really handle particularly well. Now it does. We're Getting close. Let's put the wheels down. Oops. And push your nose down. We've got a warning there, I think. Uh, but uh, because it's a simulator, it's a bit more forgiving. And here we are, where we have landed. So there you go, that was a quick run through of uh, Space Shuttle a Journey Into Space. And it does uh, feel like, I mean, it's probably not that exciting to watch. But uh, when you're playing it, it does feel like you've gone on a little trip. Um, i say it's, I think for an Atari 2600 game, it's pretty phenomenal, actually. Uh, and uh, I think it's translated pretty well into the C64. It could have been polished up a bit more, I think, graphically. But it's, I guess... Um, you know, if it's not broken, uh, don't fix it. Uh, it's, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, it sort of plays pretty well. I, I mean, it's, it doesn't often doesn't have the depth of something like Gunship or Project Stealth Fighter or, or any of those other Microprose simulators. Um, it doesn't have that kind of depth. It's almost a, an, an arcade style approach, but um, yeah, I think it plays pretty well. It's quite engrossing to play. Um, I'll give it seven out of ten. Um, that's quite a nice little game. 
Um, so it's just it's a shame it doesn't have more than that one mission. It would have added so much more to it, but given it came out in 1983 yeah, originally, you know, it's uh, I think it's pretty good for what it is. So yep, 7 out of 10 for Space Shuttle, A Journey Into Space, and um, see you in the next video.